will be led by Reverend Dale Wiseman, Senior Pastor at La Crosse Baptist Church, and he will also lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before I begin, on behalf of the officers of the Clay County District Schools Police Department, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this new agency as you saw it fit to take measures necessary to protect tomorrow's leaders, and we're thankful for the opportunity to serve this community. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight asking for your hand of blessing and protection on the students, parents, educators of the Clay County School District. We ask uh, that you would lead and guide and give wisdom to Superintendent Davis, all the school board members, leaders, and staff in the school district. I ask God for your hand of blessing on the Clay County District Schools Police Department, Chief Wagner, the command staff, the supervisors, and all the officers. God, help us to walk worthy of our vocation, as Ephesians 4 tells us. As we take our positions in our respective places, help us to be vigilant, as well as to protect and serve in your strength. Finally, my God, I ask that you would bless everyone here tonight in our communities. May you be glorified in everything we do, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Will you join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. The, the Clay County School Board... Uh, monthly meeting will come to order August the 1st, 2019. I'd like to welcome you citizens of Clay County. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend tonight's school board meeting. Okay, try again. Welcome, citizens of Clay County. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend tonight's school board meeting. This meeting is our opportunity as your elected representatives to collaborate openly and make decisions that will decide the future direction of our public schools and the education of our children here in Clay County. If you wish to address the board, there will be an opportunity to speak for three minutes. Please fill out a card, which you will find located in the back of the room. Indicate the specific, specific item or topic you wish to speak about and turn it in promptly. No additional cards will be accepted once the board moves to the public comment section under presentations from the audience. Your participa participation is welcomed and appreciated. First item on our agenda, recognitions and awards. The 2019 Clay County District Schools Police Department swearing in ceremony. And I'll turn this over to our Chief of Police, Kenneth Wagner. I had this set up earlier to fit me, but uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm absolutely humbled to be in front of everybody tonight. School board members, thank you. Let me start with a review in history because this history is very brief. Back in around October, I think Ms. Bola and Ms. Karakas talked about what are we going to do in our next school year? What are our options? What, what, what's going to happen? Look at all these different options. Fast forward to February 2019. You all decided that you were going to institute, and I think the words were do it in-house, to create its own police department. By majority of vote, you created the Clay County District School Police Department, and that was all to be in compliance with the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act. With the board's decision, and I would like to recognize Mr. Bruce Harvin, Mr. Harvin, there he is all the way in the back. He began the application process with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. He is the one that set this all up and start the wheels in motion to get this going. And boy, was it a train. It was a train running on a track really quick. The school district then advertised for, the, for a, uh, a director and for a police, a chief, a chief of police in February 2019. And 
It was a grueling, tough, long, in front of a bunch of highly educated men to interview for that chief of police. Mr. Dr. Kemp, you guys intimidated me. <laughs> I was selected, um, and uh, it was a, it's an interesting story if you saw the news for Jack. It kind of left uh, the story out, but I said, I hope nobody saw me in the parking lot. That was because Mr. Davis called me and said, I'm going to select you. I really, I didn't do any cartwheels, I promise, but I was really happy. So right at that same time, and it was just a little bit before Sheriff Rick Beasler, he's uh, retired, he is in our audience also, he was brought on as a consultant. <clears throat> I knew there was going to be lots to do and needed that assistance. I embraced it, and I was going to start the best school police department in the state of Florida. March 12th, with the assistance of Sheriff Rick Beasler, making a couple phone calls to some friends, all the way up there in, in uh, I think, Blackburg, Virginia, I think it was correct, to where they issue what's called the ORI. We got our ORI in less than a month at record time, and that's where you reach out to friends and say, can you help us? Sheriff Rick Beasler is the one who did that for us. That was just the beginning. I had to start a long process. We had to enter into a lot of MOUs for, in order to establish criminal justice information and some of that networks and get in some uh, memorandums of understanding to be able to hire who you see in front of you. With those, we got MOUs with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Clay County Sheriff's Office, Green Cove Springs, which is represented tonight by uh, Chief Asdot, and Orange Park Police Department. The list goes on and on. It hasn't stopped and we're still on that train track moving forward very quickly. I began that hiring process and as you see these 46 officers sitting in front of you, I sat down with every one of them. And I, and I have said it many times before and I wanna commit to this community. I asked each and one of these officers if something dangerous or uh, adverse behavior would to come on our campus. I asked every one of them would you be willing to stand up and take out that assailant and protect our students, our faculty, our community members? Every one of them said, absolutely, that's why I'm here. Those applicants needed background checks. As you can see, there's 46 officers here. I do want to recognize who led that work. I asked for the help of retired FBI agents who are in our audience, and I would like to ask them to stand and be recognized for her because they screen the best of the best. Retired agent, Doug Jones. <laughs> Richard Dick Harrington. <laughs> Bill Dayoff. Bill Dayoff, he didn't make it, unfortunately. Al Hernandez. Frank Oliva. And last but not least, that led a lot of this work, Leo Dawson. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now, these officers sitting in here, they're the ones that had to sit in there, and uh, I'm pretty sure those background investigators still make them nervous. <laughs> After those investigators took place, I looked to hire two lieutenants to help lead that work, and they started about a month after I did. Those two will be recognized later on. <clears throat> that would be Lieutenant Mills and Lieutenant Romano. Lieutenant Mills is the one who handles our training, and that training started right there on June 6th and still goes on to this day. Lieutenant Romano is the administrative side of it, and he has been really my, both of them really my right-hand man to uh, get, this, get this going and get this started. And, um, they, didn't, they didn't realize that they were on the Amtrak going 100 miles an hour down that tracks. <laughs> but the big day was June 6, 2019, when these officers started. Each and every day there was training, probably some training that they didn't want to engage in, but they're training each and every day on many different things, and I'll touch on those, and that training won't stop until the very first day of school on August 13th. Highlighting that training, we went over emergency vehicle operations, use of force training, use and qualifications for handguns and rifles, FBI active shooter, active assailant training, safe crisis management, 
Florida law updates that will be from uh, the legal advisor from the Leon County Sheriff's Office, Mr. Jim Pimentel. Mental health first aid, classroom de-escalation training, school familiarization all the way from the further southern part of our county down there in Keystone all the way up to the most northern part of our county at Argyle Elementary. And they all are going to be certified by Florida Department of Law Enforcement as school resource officers. Some of them already had it because they had that prior experience. And the list goes on and on and on. This group of professional men and women bring over 900 years of law enforcement experience. Individually, as an average, there's 20.4 years law enforcement experience. What I'd like to display for the community and our board members is a short video that will touch about what some of these officers did during, from June 6th to this very day. That is just a snapshot of what they did. A lot of things going on. Now to you, I gave some of you a little bit of teaser. But this is your time. Now to you, our elected superintendent, Clay County School Bemers. What I submit to you is a true token of this momentous day. Similar to military and law enforcement, challenge coins are used to instill among unity among unit members and members and to recognize excellent work. For this, I would like to present to you your personalized inaugural Clay County District School Police Department challenge coin, as each coin is very specific to you. As you'll see in the coin is engraved S2019 for the superintendent, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, for each of the county districts that you represent. These will never be duplicated again. They're yours.
now for the superintendent to come down and share a few words. At this time, I'd also ask that the uh, board members take their respective seats in the front. Okay. Testing, I'm gonna see if this works. I'll wait for the board members to come down. We'll make some room right here for them. <laughs> the chair's ready. Thank you, Ms. Carrigan. Yes, ma'am, I will. Yeah. First and foremost, uh, you know, let, let's give some love because these young men and women look beautiful tonight and awesome in their uniform. Let's give them some love. They look great. They look awesome. And I, and I can tell you, uh, you know, as, as superintendent, you know, my job is to work collectively with the board to make decisions that are the best interest of this organization. And, you know, I, honestly and openly, I can tell you, we had some, uh, some barriers in the way. We had some misinformation, some misconceptions uh, about this body of work. But I can tell you now more than ever, I can tell you that we have done the right thing for this organization, the right thing for our children and for the working conditions of our adults, because these young men and women are ready to go to work and protect and serve our children every day in Clay County District Schools. I can tell you that. In addition, I can tell you this. We had individuals that were really instrumental in this work, and it could not have happened without their leadership, without their energy, without their courage to really stand up, lock arms with me and our, and our staff to make this happen. So if I call you na your name, will you please stand up and, and, and remain standing? First is Mr. Bruce Harbin in the back, who initiated this work. Also, we have Dr. Kemp as well, Assistant Superintendent of Operations. Then we have this gentleman we brought on board. He's always standing. I try not to stand next to him because he's 6'5", and I'm like 5'6". <laughs> Chief Wagner. And then there's another individual that, you know what, the first time I met this individual, I went to his home and talked to him about putting this together. I was blown away about his knowledge, his intellect, and his truly care for Clay County. And without him really pulling some strings and being really instru instrumental in influencing our efforts, I can tell you it would have been harder task to complete. And this is an individual that I am proud to say is our sheriff, and that is uh, Mr. Rick Beasler. I say sheriff. I say sheriff because he's all once a sheriff, always a sheriff. And uh, and then once again, we had two individuals that came on and took the leap of faith, who are with a great organization with the young men and women in green who are awesome in their partnership, who came to us, and, and that is uh, Lieutenant Mills and Lieutenant Romano. Can you please stand up. There they are. Right, this is the team openly and Miss Gain as well that made this happen. And I thank each of you for your dedication. Deal with me every day. How are we doing? Is our stuff coming? Where are the invoices? Are our cars going to be here? Uniforms? What about the you know, ammunition, supplies, the makeups, the policy? I thank you so very much, each of you, for having the, the, the courage to make this happen. So my hat's off to you, and I look forward to a, to a great force. And thank you again. Let's give them a round of applause. So, look forward to continuing a beautiful relationship with the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have a great working relationship with uh, Chief Asdot at, at Green Cove and also Chief Goble at Orange Park. Together, collectively, we will continue to do great things for this community and do great things for our schools. Chief Wagner, from day one, I knew that you were the right hire for the school district. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what we've accomplished in the short period. I look forward to being a partner in this work, sir. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's really hard to go behind that again. Golly. <laughs> this night is really about these 46 men and women that are sitting, which you'll soon see face you in a moment. This is about them. What I do ask is that you hold that applause just for a little bit. So, you've heard the phrase, sworn law enforcement officers, right? 
Let, allow me to call Judge Timothy Collins to come up to administer the oath to me so that I can be sworn in as the Chief of Police for the inaugural Clay County District School Police Department. I'd also ask, that, ask my wife, Amy, she's a little shy, <laughs> to come up and help with this process. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to each of these police officers for the Clay County District Schools Police Department. I would kindly ask that family members, when you see the first column of officers come up to move your way to this side, I'd ask everybody to give them room to get, get to the side. The family members that will be pinning these badges on each of these officers, please come up and meet with Ms. Gann on this side of the auditorium. You'll know when to do it. <laughs> Officer Lester Booker. He is being pinned by his wife, Cindy. He has 10 years of law enforcement experience, and he come to us from the Department of Agriculture Law Enforcement. Officer Glenn Janan. He is being pinned by his wife, Tiffany. He has 37 years of law enforcement experience, and he comes to us from the Bradford County Sheriff's Office. Officer Greg Lott. He is being pinned by his wife, Wendy. He comes to us with 28 years law enforcement from the Athens, Alabama Police Department. <laughs> Officer Alan Michael Reese, he is being pinned by his mother, Charlene. He comes to us with six years of law enforcement between the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Officer Joe Lee. He is being pinned by his wife, Christy. He has 29 years of law enforcement experience. He retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, but there is a special part to Officer Lee. He was one of our inaugural guardians that started with the Clay County District School Police Department last year. Officer Rob Troxel, he is being pinned by his wife, Lori. He comes to us with 30 years law enforcement experience. He retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Corey Wilson, 
He is being pinned by his wife, Jennifer. He has 16 years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the Baker County Sheriff's Office. Officer Alex Stetner, his wife Erin is pinning him this evening. He comes to us with six and a half year in law enforcement and he was a member of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Christopher Robinson, he is being pinned by his granddaughter, Christina Lewis, 25 years law enforcement experience and he retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Chaplain and officer Dale Wiseman. He is being pinned by his wife, Cassie. Five years law enforcement and came to us from the Bradford County Sheriff's Office. Sergeant John Revis. He is being pinned by his son, Michael Revis. 18 years law enforcement experience and he came to us from the Duval School Board Police. Sergeant Sarah Taylor is being pinned by her father, Russ. She has 18 years law enforcement experience and came to us from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Officer Chris Kesting, he is being pinned by his wife, Dawn. He has 15 years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the Gainesville Police Department. Officer Thomas Brown is being pinned by his wife, Laura. He has 29 and a half years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Gary Brooker, he is being pinned by his wife, Jackie. He comes to us with 35 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Florida Highway Patrol. He too was a member of the inaugural guardian program that started with the district schools last year. Officer David Kaplitz, he is being pinned by his wife, Michelle. He has 25 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. He too was an inaugural guardian with the Clay County District Schools last year. Officer Robert Tootin, he is being pinned by his wife, Azure. 27 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office he also was an inaugural guardian with the Clay County District Schools last year. Officer Sabrina Parrish, she is being pinned by her son Gregory Parrish and her sister, State Representative Kimberly Daniels. She has 29 years law enforcement experience. She retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Jack Bledsoe, he is being pinned by his fiance, Megan Toon. He has nine years law enforcement experience and was a member of the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Officer Gerald Ruiz, he is being pinned by his son, Gerald Ruiz Jr. He comes to us with 24 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Bradford County Sheriff's Office. Officer Robert Curry, he is being pinned by his grandson, Landon, and Landon's grandmother, Officer Curry's wife, also Cheryl, is accompanying them. He has 35 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Officer Ricky Stanford, he is being pinned by his brother, Jimmy Stanford. 
He brings 27 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Steven Trozinski, I won $10. <laughs> he is being pinned by his wife, Dawn. Deborah. Oh, Deborah. <laughs> I should have put my glasses on. Deborah. I just lost my $10. He has 27 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Daniel Luxemburg, he is being pinned by his daughter Reese, which is gonna take a bit, which is perfectly okay. And he is being accompanied, she is being accompanied by mom, Ashley, and wife of Daniel. He comes to us nine years law enforcement experience and was a member of the Jacksonville Beach Police Department. Officer Tom Flacco, his wife Lauren will be pinning him this evening, 24 years law enforcement experience and retired for the Kissimmee Police Department in the Orlando area. <clears throat> Officer Adam Rabinowitz, he is being pinned by his wife Michelle. He has 18 years law enforcement experience and he comes to us from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Officer Rabinowitz was also a guardian in the inaugural uh, program for the Clay County District Schools last year. Officer Larry Sapp is being pinned by his wife, Deborah. He has 12 years law enforcement experience and he was a member of the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. Officer Philip Myers, he is being pinned by, pinned by his mother, Kay Myers. He has five years law enforcement experience and he comes to us from the Duval County School Police. Officer Jacob Saunders is being pinned by his wife, Crystal. He has 14 years law enforcement experience and was a member of the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Officer and Dr. Terrence Reed is being pinned by his son, Joshua. He has 25 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Chip Putman, he has been pinned by his wife, Tracy. He has 28 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Lee Pittman, he is being pinned by his wife, Stephanie. He has 26 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Sergeant Andrew Polycastro is being pinned by his wife, Connie, 12 years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the Clay County Sheriff's Office.
Sergeant Carlo Chandra is being pinned by his wife, Iris. He has 25 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Martin County Sheriff's Office. This one's gonna wow you. Officer Michael Monroe, 14 years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the Hawaii State Sheriff's Department. Officer Moses Bellamy, he is being pinned by his mother, Felita. He has six years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the Bradford County Sheriff's Office. Officer Gyla Banks is being pinned by her significant other, Mike Stevens. She has 13 years law enforcement experience and comes to us from the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Officer Joseph Wade, he is being pinned by his daughter, Savannah. He has 11 years law enforcement experience, and he comes to us from the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Officer Lori Browse, she is being pinned by Trisha Hansen, with whom she served in the United States Navy, and Trisha's daughter, Eileen. She has 18 years law enforcement experience. She comes to us from the U.S. Navy Military Police. Officer Hernandez Moose. He is being pinned by his son, James. He has 31 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Linda Jones, she is being pinned by her mother, Ann Singleton, and she's also accompanied by Officer Jones' daughter, Ann Johnson. She has 18 years law enforcement experience and was a member of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Officer Lynn Reeves, she is being pinned by her son, her eldest son, Kyle Gilbo, 27 years law enforcement experience. She retired from the Palaka Police Department. I see a big old smile over there. Officer JJ Dixon. She is being pinned by her son, Sergeant Richard Hendley, from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. She has 26 years law enforcement experience and she retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Son followed mama's steps. Isn't that a beautiful thing? <laughs> Detective David Oliver, he is being pinned by his daughter, Audrey. He has 25 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Now, I would like to ask the two lieutenants to take their posts. Family members of the lieutenants, please find their way. <laughs> Lieutenant Stephen Mills is being pinned by his brother off. Officer Danny Mills, he has 28 years law enforcement experience and retired from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Lieutenant Mark Romano, he is being pinned by his wife, Kristen. He has 18 years law enforcement experience and came with me from the Clay County Sheriff's Office too.
citizen of the state of Florida. A citizen of the state of Florida. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. And be employed as an officer. And be employed as an officer. Of the Clay County District School Police Department. And the Clay County District School Police Department. And a recipient of public funds as such. And a recipient of public funds as such. Do, ha- do hereby solemnly swear or affirm. Do hereby solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Florida. And of the state of Florida. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> oh, darn. What I can say to you as a chief of police, when I am in front of each and every one of these officers, and as you see and hear as I read their credentials, I am in awe. These are amazing individuals that I get to work with each and every day with our dedication and commitment to the Clay County District Schools Police Department. Madam Chair, I return it to you. Thank you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Uh, At the request of Chief Wagner, uh, we are going to have a 15-minute pause in the meeting. Uh, I know that there's a lot of families that want to have pictures and lots of hugs and kisses, and so we will uh, uh, resume the meeting in 15 minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. If anybody in the audience wants to get that one last picture for all of them, they're going to line up for this last picture. This one is going to be the inaugural police department picture. If you want to get them down, get them down. to voicemail.
Gentlemen, someone has lost a phone. Seated will resume the board meeting. And I'm sorry it's, it's hot. The air conditioner is on high, but we had quite a crowd in here. In another hour, you'll be freezing. We hope. Oh. Okay. Okay. We will now resume the uh, Clay County School Board meeting August 1st, 2019. I don't know, well, I do know. Everyone sitting up here and our people on either side and the employees of the district who are in the audience, wasn't that phenomenal? I mean, I am, I am just in awe. <laughs> they said we couldn't do it and- We proved them wrong. Due to the hard work from several people, as Mr. Davis said, uh, I, I am amazed and um, I hope y'all saw the uh, cars outside too. They look great. Okay, now back to, oh, we were gone so long I got out. <laughs> it's turned as high as, yes, it's turned up as high as it'll go. Yes, ma'am, through the chair, due to the, the number of people that were in this room, uh, yeah. you know, it was set at around 64 prior, so uh, right now we're trying to get it back cooled off. Okay. And see if we can get it back to a comfortable feel in this uh, in this uh, TCC. Okay, all right. We have uh, <laughs> there was no student showcase tonight. There's no presenters. Uh, <laughs> we have no presenters. Uh, no school showcase. This is the last call for comment cards. If any of you uh, would like to fill out a card. Uh, please fill one out right now and hand it to, well, is there an officer in the room? I, Mr. Ward. We, you can hand it to Mr. Ward over on this side. <laughs> All of our officers are outside, it looks like. Okay. No, here comes one. Okay, then we'll do uh, public comments. These are our three-minute speakers. Uh, Betsy Rager. Hi, I'm Betsy Recker, and my address is on file. This, I'm just amazed by what you guys have achieved in a short period of time. And for naysayers who said you don't have time to do it, and we're rushing, and why are we in such a hurry? Um, because it was the best thing to do for the students. And I appreciate your leadership on that. I have four children that either have or now attend or have graduated, two graduated from this school. And this is one of the most beautiful campuses in this, in this county. But my children very rarely attended a class in a brick and mortar building. They were almost exclusively in the portable park. I, I, I'm concerned about the safety for that. I feel much better about the safety after tonight's presentation, but I'm concerned because I know that plywood and siding aren't going to stop a bullet, and that concerns me. Grayson is about to be in the second grade at Patterson Elementary, and chances are he'll be in the brick-and-order school this year. There are a couple of second grades that aren't, but it is the last year probably in his entire school career, that he will be primarily housed in a brick and mortar classroom with thick concrete walls. That concerns me. That worries me. There is no time to wait. You have already proven that you can do miraculous things in a short period of time if you're given the go ahead, if you are given the funding that you need. You can do amazing things. I hope that you'll continue to fight the fight. I hope that you will continue to be brave and stand up for what's the best for the students of this county, especially for mine. 
Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Thomas Riddle. Good evening. I'd like to start out on a positive note by- Mr. Riddle, would you state your name and address for the record, oh, please? Oh, I'm sorry. My Thank name you. is Thomas Riddle. I live at 3536 Westover Road, Fleming Island. Thank you. And yes, Tom Riddle is my real name. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to start on a positive note by congratulating the school board by providing resources and the environment to bring the overall school grades up for this year. Uh, there are a couple things that have a tendency to raise my blood pressure, and one is raising taxes. And I understand that uh, the school board wishes to run some laws through to increase our sales tax to provide for the upkeep and the renovation and perhaps even building new schools. And I really don't have a real great problem with that. I just have a question. Um, what have you been doing with the money that we've been giving you for years and years and years? <clears throat> the second subject that I wish to discuss is an article that was found in the Quay today regarding cars for all our new school officers. Maybe give you a little background on mine. I have a baccalaureate degree in environmental health sciences. I have a master's degree in education. I have taught in overseas schools. I have years and years of experience teaching young men and even some children in, while well, I was in the Navy. I retired to the Navy in 1980 and we settled here in Clay County. In any case, According to the article, the rationale for ordering all of these new cars for these police officers is one, to take the child home if they miss the school bus. Two, if you have an ill ch child, to take the child home. <clears throat> On those two points, I'm thinking, <clears throat> you take the child home, there's nobody at home. Mommy and Daddy are working. Who's going to take care of these children? Okay. Third, we have no juvenile facilities here in Clay County. Another excuse for buying these cars was <coughs> to transport children to Duval County to the juvenile facilities. What's wrong with the uh, Sheriff's Department for doing that? My thought on missing school buses and ill children is uh, back in my day, you used to call the parents. Come and get your kid. He's ill. Come and get your child. He missed a school bus. Uh, very often, uh, we had children that would miss the school bus. We'd call the parents. And oftentimes, a child would have to sit out there on the school steps for two hours until mommy or daddy got off work. Going back to the tax thing, I have a sneaking suspicion that by the taxpayers and what I spoke with my, some of my fellow taxpayers, Excuse me, Mr. basically Bill. have shot yourself in the foot by saying we need to raise taxes and then we turn okay. around and buy a million dollars worth of, worth of cars. Okay. Thank Mr. you Bill. very much. Thank you so much. Uh, the next speaker, Jamie Beck. I'm Jamie Beck, and I'm at 2223 Astor Street, Orange Park. Um, I would like to say thank you for trying to get this half-cent sales tax for not, miss, as Ms. Rager said, about our children in schools. My children will also be in a school where we have one indoor hallway, which is the front office, and um, we would like to see this sales tax used for some capital to help out with um, these issues that we're having and the safety of our children. I'm also a PE teacher, and we have no 
large indoor spaces for our children to go when it rains a lot of times, and no covered spaces outside for some of them at schools. My school is on, which is Orange Park Elementary. It is on a main road in Orange Park and where we have gates that we keep closed all day long. If I need them for class, which is also my track, um, it is lined off for my units and track and my track team and my fitness testing. If I need them, I have to have our um, police officer from our school go out and open the gates and sit there instead of doing her job to keep the whole school safe. She has to sit in our roadway to keep my, my kids safe in class. So I would appreciate if everyone would really push for this half cent sales tax. I think it could help not just our students and our teachers, but you know, help our PE teachers as well to try to get some facilities that they need to keep them safe as well. So thank you very much. And the next speaker, Katherine Morrison. Tell me you have a video presentation. I do. <laughs> no, I wish. Uh, Catherine Morrison, my address is on file. Um, I just want to come up here and thank you guys for trying to get the half penny sales tax. I work at Charles E. Bennett, and for five years we've been waiting for a new cafeteria, and we're still waiting. So um, our school is big our, with the number of students, but small in size and buildings. Um, we have a whole bunch of portables that house fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, and it's really hard to do um, when we have potential. We have the, the fence around, we have a resource officer, but a, as Betsy said, a brick and mortar buildings, a bigger cafeteria would be most beneficial for our school. Thank you. Okay. The next speaker, Victoria Kidwell. Hi. Um, my name is Victoria Kidwell, and my address is on file. Um, at the last school board meeting, um, we heard a great presentation from the district that detailed over $300 million in repairs needed for our schools. And I and many other people stood up before you and asked you the board to allow the citizens of Clay County to have the opportunity to vote to provide the funding for those necessary repairs. The board understood the dire situation and voted to approve the referendum allowing the half cent sales tax to be placed on the ballot and I want to thank you for that. But now the board of county commissioners has wielded its power to vote no to a special election for the sales tax. And a judge has demanded the BCC show just cause for denying your uh, request. I'm not sure where that's going now. Um, a lot of political maneuvering is going on behind the scenes. Um, and rumor has it that some members of the school board may be uh, are changing their minds and are thinking about protecting their positions in election years and may not want the half sales tax now. Um, I hope that's not the case. Um, you know, it's, I work at Argyle Elementary, the school's not that old, but, you know, I went into my classroom today and the rugs are shambles, they're first graders, it's a mess. I know we don't have the money to do anything about it. Um, and our school's not even as old as most of the schools in the county. Ours is newer. Um, we're still not getting PICO funds. Um, the repair list keeps getting longer and we keep growing in enrollment. Um, politicians need to not be politicians when they're on the school board, so I hope that that's not the case for you all. I hope that you have not changed your mind, that you are gonna be bold and brave. Uh, this great ceremony we had today is a testament, uh, the swearing in of the Clay County School District's law enforcement, how we can accomplish something that we really need to do when we put our mind to and we fight for it. All the naysayers, it still got done, it was wonderful. And I feel safer going to school just knowing that they're out there. The experience, all those people that said, you know, Keystone Cops, that was all ridiculous. You know, we have a great force that's gonna be there for us. We need to take care of our schools and our kids. And I hope that you'll fight that fight with all the politicians who are gonna say, we don't need another tax, we need it. We know we're not getting that money from Tallahassee, $0 in maintenance this year. 
we're not going to get anything next year either. That's They've made their stand. We've got to take care of our schools and our kids. Please fight the good fight. Thanks. The next speaker is Rhonda Jett. Rhonda Jett, it's protected. Um, I come from a project of a small town. It taught me to be humble, taught me to be driven, and it taught me to leave things better than I found them. With a half cent sales tax, we have that opportunity. The issue is the referendum was brought to the voters with lack of transparency and accountability. It was formed in the shade of fake crisis and emergency meetings, which begs the question, what are those immediate dangers? What schools are affected? How are we to ensure that safety of those children? Words and optics have consequences. Our teachers, our students, and our community deserve better. It's been stated by a paid employee of this board that I hate my children. Let me be clear, I do love them with every fiber of me. And on the contrary of that individual's misconception, this isn't about me. It's about our community and the generations that follow that we are asking to shoulder this tax. What will we leave them? The board is elected, it is not entitled. Telling the citizen, let's get it on the ballot and then we can mark it, isn't called transparency, it's called entrapment. There's too much to stake for the airways to be filled with fake meetings and crisis. We must join and should join together to make Clay County Schools great by giving the voters a referendum that's above reproach and that the voters can have confidence in. I've stated before, and I'll state it again. If you don't do what is right, you become a part of what is wrong. Thank you. The next speaker, Jennifer Burghardt. Hello, Jennifer Burghardt, address is 3063 Paddle Creek Drive, Green Cove Springs. Um, I've stood up here over the last few years um, and have addressed a variety of concerns or issues, excessive testing in the classroom, um, issues with insurance, which now have been, seem to be resolved, so I'm ecstatic about that one, about ESE teachers not being adequately um, or at all compensated for their extra work, um, about teacher autonomy in the classroom. Never once did I think I was going to have to stand up and, at a school board meeting and address the need for appropriate facilities in my classroom. So this is not so much directed at the school board other than my plea that you guys will continue to fight the fight and make it a priority to have the half cent sales tax. And I would like to be a testament as to why, because everyone's acting like it's not a big deal, we don't need a rush. Why is it that we need the funding? Well, I teach at Orange Park High School. Okay, so I'm one of those teachers affected by the $1.2 million we need to increase the um, AC, the coolants. That's what was shown at our um, budget hearing two days ago. So I do want to clarify, I put in over a dozen work orders for my classroom alone because the AC was not adequately working in my classroom consistently throughout the last semester. So I do want to clarify, we're not talking about something we can postpone for a whole nother year until the next round of elections. This is something that needs to go before the public immediately because I don't want to sit through um, multiple days where I'm sweating in my classroom or, hey, it's okay today, but it's not okay the next day. We we know consistency in the classroom is important, and as a teacher in the state of Florida, I kind of expect to have AC working in my classroom. And I come from Orange Park High School, which is a very old school. All right, a little bit of pain and washing the floors isn't going to help the structural um, needs that we have in our school, as well as many other schools. So I'm a little bit confused if some people haven't been actually paying attention at some of these meetings. We have the picture showing the actual needs. These aren't fabrications. These are literal needs. I mean, I have documentation of 12, at least a dozen work orders I put in with the county to make certain my administration, administration did, to make certain my AC was being checked on. And then I come to find out, hey, we do have some major needs that can't just be fixed with the band-aid. So this is why, and also I will address, we have unfunded mandates. So everyone talking about the other um, uh, tax and so forth, unfunded mandates when it comes to the mental health with the five hours. Also all of the, um, the unfunded mandate of um, hardening our schools and making it um, prepared for um, resource officers and so forth. That was all unfunded. Is Are people forgetting that? That's why we had to have the original sales tax or the original tax. So the millage increase. So I, I think we want to make sure we got all of our facts straight because we we have a need, we have shown evidence that there is a need, and now we need to act, or at least give the voters the opportunity to act with full facts. Um, so uh, I just ask, please uh, push forward, please make certain you're fighting, because there are teachers out there that need AC in their classroom starting in August.
August. So we're looking at very hot classrooms. And it's not daily, so it's not like the AC's out. It just sporadically works. And I can't be sweating in the classroom, and my students can't learn that way. So thank you for your time. Amy Fears. Hello, um, I also wanted to speak on the half cent sales tax and thank you all. My name is Amy Fairs and my address is on file. Um, I teach at an elementary school in upper grades, which means I have always taught in portables. And my current portable, um, it has moisture issues. It has air conditioning issues. It also works sporadically. The kids are so excited when they come in and it's cool. Um, during the winter, we didn't get a lot of freezing days, but the AC on the outside freezes up. So we watch for the sun and when the sun comes over and unthaws the unit, then we get heat. So the kids are all like, yay, and they ask if they can go out and look and see where the sun is so they can estimate how long it's gonna take before we get some warm air and can take our gloves off. Um, they deserve better than that, and you guys know that. I just want to encourage you to keep fighting the good fight because we're not getting support from Tallahassee, and um, we need the half-cent sales tax to go towards our schools. Uh, just so Dr. Kent will know, which school are you at? I'm at Clay Hill Elementary. Okay. I want him to take note. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That completes our three-minute cards, um, so we will move to the adoption of the consent agenda. There were no items pulled. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. Second. Oh. I have a motion by Ms. Caracas. Which one of you ladies are? <laughs> Thank you. Second by uh, Ms. Bullock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> uh, CCEA update. Is anyone here to speak for CCEA? She is flying home. home. <laughs> Y'all aren't going to sub? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the CESPA update, Teresa Roman? No. Dixon. 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 I mean, Dixon. <laughs> Why do I do that every month? <laughs> this, this, is, this is a past principle, and it just... I, yes, I know who you are, Teresa Dixon. Okay. okay. Teresa Dixon, SESPA I, president. Got it. You know I know your name, <laughs> but I do it every month. Thank you. Uh, my address is on file. I just want to say how excited I was today. What a beautiful ceremony. What an exciting time in Clay County. You know, and as I was sitting there and I was watching all the officers come up and be sworn in and, and all of that excitement, I just started kind of thinking about different things that we've accomplished. So I started making a list. New police department in record time. And not just any police department, an exceptional police department with exceptional people that are going to be in our schools. New police department, record time an A school district again, eighth in the state, keep rising closer and closer to that number one, a graduation rate higher than we've ever seen, instructional or uh, industry certifications more than we've ever seen, Grad graduating college ready students as per SATs, ACTs, and PERT scores higher than we've ever seen a higher fund balance than we've had in more years than I can even remember. Employee morale up and continued collaboration between the, the employees and the district administration. Insurance contribution up and the SESPA contract settled. That's just Yay. in a few months. This is exciting stuff. We're doing great things in Clay County. And anybody says that Clay County School District is failing its students is on a different planet because we are not failing our students. Our students are more successful now than they have ever been. And it continues to grow more and more. We've, we've uh, settled that contract for SESPA. Every employee, once it's ratified, and I, I, I feel certain that it will be, I know that you will ratify it, and we're going to be recommending to our, t our, our people once they see that ratification package to ratify that contract, every support employee will see a pay increase. 
Now, is it everything we wanted? No, it's not everything we wanted. It can't be. It doesn't work like that. We have to meet in the middle. And that's where that collaboration comes in, into play. And that's what we've been working towards. We've met in the middle. But every one of my support employees are going to see a pay increase. The, 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 uh, the bus drivers, <laughs> we're going to actually be able to compete with bus drivers in surrounding counties to draw in those drivers that we so desperately need. I am so proud of the decisions that have been made. Clay County District Schools have been good stewards of the money that they have been, been given to use. They have fought this battle with the state legislator constantly fighting them all the way along the way, constantly cutting, cutting, cutting. I keep hearing, what are you doing with the money? What are you doing with the money? What are you doing with the money? What money? It keeps, the pot keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller for our public schools statewide. While we only have two charter schools in Clay County, we do have numerous ones in the state. And what is the state legislative sessions they decide to do? They're taking the money that need to be provided to our public schools for the improvements that need to be made, for the building, the capital projects that need to happen. They're taking that money and they're giving it away to the charter schools. That's why we need this tax increase. We must have it because we must be able to continue to grow and provide for our Clay County students. They deserve it. It is time to get rid of these portables. It is time to place the emphasis on Clay County schools. And I guess that's all I want to say about that. We've got to do it. Thank you for everything that you're doing, for the decisions that you're making. I know they're hard decisions. I know you face a lot of obstacles in your way from time to time. But please continue to press through. This is what our children need. Thank you. Ms. Dixon, amen. That's all I got to say. Um, we had the last call for uh, the public comment cards before you arrived at the meeting. It, we had had the last call, and, and we were having a speaker speak when you came in. We have a cutoff, and I call last call for cards. If anyone would like to speak, Please turn your card in promptly. You were not in the room at the time. I saw when you came in the door. We already were in the th we were in the three minute speakers. Uh, officer, Mr. Finning, you need to sit down. Thank you. Okay. The next item is D1, appoint one member and one citizen member to serve on the 2000... Oh. Is that intentional? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. Uh, skip me. Oh, uh, I would never, ever... Uh, Y'all saw the screen that. come down, right? I saw <laughs> the screen come down. Our illustrious <laughs> superintendent would like to make his presentation at this time an update. Well, well, thank you, Ms. Chair. I appreciate it. You know, I gave you all last month, I, I gave everyone off and yeah. uh, made it quick. Well, I'm going to do something first. I, I never do Champions of Change first, but uh, the weather is so great in here. I'm going to get these principals out of here and get them home to their families so they can enjoy their last Friday off, which they're never Ooh. off. So I'm going to go down and do Champions of Change, and I'll come back and do this presentation. Before I do that, Ms. Dixon, you are on the road with me everywhere I go. Marvelous, outstanding job this evening, as always. <laughs> All right, uh, so good evening. Like I said, every month we do a Champion of Change, and uh, this month uh, we're going to focus on schools that have been highlighted and identified as golden and silver awards for the 2018-2019 uh, school year. And this is really about identifying schools that uh, represent annual and annually to recognize annually for their exemplary work for promoting parent and community engagement. 
And uh, for the Silver Schools, when I call your name, please come up. The Silver School is for individuals that have, both schools have designated a volunteer coordinator at their school to help with the efforts. They've also identified volunteer students and faculties to receive orientation on, and training on volunteerism. And then at the same time, they have student volunteer hours that are equal or exceed at least one half of the total student population of their schools. So for the Silver Wars this year, we have the first one, which is Clay uh, Senior High School. Are they here? There we go. <laughs> Green Cove Junior High School. You got to stay up here, Mr. Lewis. You got to stay up here. <laughs> Wilkinson Elementary School as well. And for the, the Golden School Wars, these are elementary and secondary schools who also do a lot of work with volunteerism. This is 80% of the school and staff has been trained in, the, in this body of work. The school has been designated an individual to lead the work for volunteers uh, through a coordinator position. And then they have a total number of volunteer service hours that are equal or twice amount the number of student population within their schools. So when I call you up, please come up. Argyle Elementary School. Fleming Island Elementary School, McCray Elementary School, Montclair Elementary School, Thunderbolt Elementary School. I think they had to run out. Okay, Mr. Lorenz is here. All right, thank you. Uh, Thunderbolt Elementary. Doctors Inlet Elementary School. Oak Leaf Junior High School. Discovery Oaks Elementary School. Discovery Oaks said they're out. I'm not dealing with this temperature. Rideout Elementary School. There we go. Keystone High School. Patterson Elementary School, Ridgeview Elementary School, uh, SBJ, Jen and Brian, Brian Jennings Elementary School, sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Swimming Pen Creek Elementary School, Ridgeview High School, Coppergate Elementary School, Orange Park Elementary School and Fleming Island Elementary School. Sorry, high school. We got there twice. <laughs> Had to do them that way. That's the way he did us with the AC this evening. It's all right. It's not his fault. He's doing a good job. It's, uh, it's really <laughs> Kim's fault. <laughs> One last time, let's give them a round of applause for everything they've done. You are champions of change. Thank you for getting individuals to come and coordinate our efforts for our children and our community every single day. Thank you. Two lines real fast. Take a picture. One line may have to step up. It's kind of like me, short, short people like me. I know, right? <laughs> this room is getting lighter with uh, att attendance this evening. And no one wants to stay for my presentation because I do have some slides tonight. And yeah. due to the temperature, it may go faster than expected. So this evening, uh -oh. we go only. This evening we want to identify the objectives is to talk about our instructional accomplishments for 1819, discuss leadership best practices, and identify our outlook for 1920. 
As we said, one of the, Ms. Dixon just uh, alluded to, uh, you know, the school district has really uh, made tremendous growth uh, since 2015-2016. Uh, as you see, we were ranked 18th in the state, and we continue to have a staircase approach to improve instruction, teaching, and learning every single day. And as you can see, this year we have we're seventh slash eight, and I'm going to give credit for both of them because we're an eighth with total points. We are seventh with the total possible percentage points, which uh, we'll take that seventh every chance we get uh, with that data because it's a true analytic, but just really shows that this is the first time we've been a double A since 2012. And this is all from the hard work of our teachers, the hard work of our, our leaders, our, our volunteers, our business partners, the leadership team, and the school board, all working in, with a singular goal of helping our children be successful inside and outside of the classrooms. This is a really neat chart by the numbers. If you look at this, this is a progression when, uh, you know, the, the 16 is 2015, 2016 prior to this administration coming in. You'll be able to see why the school district was a B school district, see the, the work that we've accomplished with the number of A schools. So, in, you know, in 15, 16, we had six A schools and everybody, we we're so excited. It's a great school district and it was with a great culture. But look what we've accomplished in three years, the transition from the sixth number of A schools and now of 24 uh, brick and mortar district managed school, which is significant. We do have an area that we have to get better in, and we know that one area, one school with Charles E. Bennett, uh, and uh, leadership did a good job last year. Well, we have a, a good plan this year. But overall, you see the massive progression for the number of A's that we've had in this school district, which shows the hard work every single day of all of our community members uh, uh, trying to have the same mission of helping our children. Um, overall, this is also, this is a three-year analysis comparison to read in mathematics. The right side, far right side is the number of percentage points that we did increase in every one of these areas from 15, 16. And you see that we, you know, you see all the numbers are moving up in the right direction. And uh, me and Professor talk about it all the time and had many conversations why these analytics look great. These are actually children that we are impacting every single day. And some of these subsets with proficiency, that's, it's, it's equivalent to thousands of students that we have helped along the way. And in the bottom quartile and the learning gains, it ends up being hundreds of students that we have helped have a better understanding in their core content areas within the school district. Uh, same mentality that we've had with science, uh, you know, since 2015, 2016, we see great movement. And the reason you see the dip in science, because we had some master schedule change in guidelines uh, from 17, 18 to 18, 19. That will, but you can see that 18, 19 is, is uh, far, uh, you know, exceeded what we were in 16, 17 and 15, 16 with significant growth in the same way with social studies continues to have great progression in middle school acceleration has been awesome, you know, exposing children to higher level thinking courses to help them be proficient every single day within, within our schools. Uh, this is a grid of, of, of all of the grade levels by content that we have seen that have uh, shown and demonstrated improvements in areas that we have uh, of opportunities. We, we hope this all to be green every single year, but we know that uh, with different dynamics that take place in our classrooms, with different readiness levels and different complexities, and sometimes changes in curriculums, this, the, this will always be a fluid document. As you can see, 14 of the 21 cells maintained or improved in Clay County, which is a celebration to hard work of our educators. And we see the big thing is if you look at the, um, you know, all of literacy, it's really hard to move literacy proficiency. Lots of green in that area with a target area of third grade and eighth grade. In the area of mathematics, we see that fifth grade is an area that we will, we will address as well. But eighth grade, the reason the eighth grade is down is because we added more students who are level threes taking accelerated courses to algebra one for equity, issue, you know, equ equity opportunities, and I will take that every single day. And that is directly linked to the algebra one score as well. And then science, we have an area of opportunity, but the entire state went down with science. So we're really going to focus on leveraging our new content and make certain that we have uh, our, our teachers and students exposed to aligned investigations with inquiry-based learning so that children are not only interacting with text, but also interacting through experience labs so that they can really turn key and have a better understanding of what they're actually being taught through their standards. And then biology, we, we knew that as master schedule changes. We were throwing so many students in biology in the ninth grade that were not uh, intellectually exposed or ready for that material, so we changed the dynamics. And this will definitely uh, increase next year when we, uh, as we have put students in uh, you know, environmental science, what helps them be exposed to in the ninth grade 
exposed to uh, bio standards for the second half of the year, and they'll be excited and exposed to bio for the following year and be greater, have greater preparation. And then you see some great work happening in, in US civics and U.S. history. Uh, Kelly Watt and her team do a phenomenal job. And uh, hats off to uh, Mr. Connor and, and Kim Bays for, for leading the work and helping leaders and helping teachers every single day with this with this analysis. Have a, a lot of highlights with our schools. These are our schools that made the greatest gains in, in uh, Clay County and Chatillon Elementary School. I try to give her some uh, shout out today in our principal's meeting. She's in the keys and uh, you know, we, we hope you're watching us, <laughs> and, but congratulations. And also Swimming Pin Creek did some great things. And you see on this, uh, on this, there's some, some schools that really have some fluent kids at their schools. And if you look at Lakeside Junior High School, you look at Orange Park, you look at Green Cove Junior High School, High School, Orange Park Elementary School, these are schools that already have fluent kids. It's really difficult to move those students from one stage to another level. So if they're doing it, that means everyone can do it within our school district. And then here's the biggest celebration that we had a number of schools move from B's to A's. And uh, just from the hard work and dedication through lesson planning, teacher, you know, uh, teaching cycle, cycles, learning cycles, independent learning cycles, and really focused on uh, a better understanding of their content and gaining access to children and, uh, you know, uh, some major movements in, in these areas. And one thing I'll highlight, if, you know, Charles, you know, W.E. Cherry is a school that has so many complexities. And if this school can, you know, move their school continuously to an A, then every one of our school district can do the same thing. And hats off to them in, the, in their work. And I'd like to highlight McCray as well. McCray is, uh, you know, was a systemic C. And then over the last two years, they've had a tremendous bump in focus. And hats off to the teachers who are working tremendously hard and the leaders to make that school uh, become an, an A and compete with everybody within this uh, within our district. And then, uh, so how do we do this? How do we maintain this in, in Clay County District Schools? Well, we really focus on building the capacity of every stakeholder within our community, whether it's instructionally and non-instructional. We make sure that we help them better understand their craft, better understand their jobs, so they can help students along the way. We want to make sure that we really have acknowledged our areas of opportunity and not just understand where we have barriers, but move to build uh, uh, true action plans that are workable and side-by-side -side teachers, and they're at the, uh, the, the table helping us with this process. And we have to measure what matters most in our schools to have overall uh, positive impact. And then we've got to establish, monitor, and refine our action plans in our school district, and then create individual accountability for 360 accountability within our schools and, and within the district level, but do it with grace and do it with respect. And then foster independent cycles of learning, continue to be a visible learner within our school district, and then establish accelerators and innovators in our schools and know who those individuals are and leverage their knowledge to help us become and continue to be great. And then, you know, and then uh, I'm going to, this is something I gave our, our leaders, I will not go over this tonight, but I gave them to, to really stay focused, to be in our classroom, to learn alongside of our teachers, to be visible learners, and then create networks within our principals, and also to, you know, this is all about learning by doing, working hand in hand with our teachers to become better in our craft. And then um, overall, so how do we continue this to be great? Our outlook is to bridge instructional gaps is to make certain that we continue to maximize our interventionists, uh, look at learning gains for our children, to have personalized learning every single day within our schools, to build true PLCs and leverage the knowledge of our teachers, and really focus on and market the social-emotional side of every one of our schools to better help our children and to have internal and external resources to be successful. And, um, and overall, we want to make sure that we continue to expand choice as a number of choice programs go, uh, moving along in, in, within our school district this year. And then we're going to launch and implement community learning series. Uh, right now we have, uh, you know, this work is being done by uh, Professor McCauley and also Mr. Caracas, who are going to go on the road and really get in front of our, teach, uh, of our community to really help them understand how to be a better first educator, to help them with the skills they need to be fluent within our community and then overall use some uh, analytics through climate surveys and panoramics, uh, panorama surveys to better understand how we can continue to evolve. So many thanks to our teachers, many thanks to our leaders and our parents and our students and to this board for trusting us in this work. And uh, I'm excited that we moved from a 707 to a 721 this school year, which is really hard to do to maintain our efforts. So thank you for trusting us and we'll continue to work hard every day. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, ma'am. We can put that up. Next is D1, appoint one board member and one citizen member to serve on the 2019 Value Adjustment Board. Um, 
we brought this up at our agenda review the other day. Um, I uh, uh, had asked Ms. Bush to call the uh, several weeks ago when we first were told about it. I'd <laughs> asked her to call to see if the, what was that? The screen. Oh, not jumpy or anything. <laughs> um, but I had asked her to call the uh, citizen appointee from last year just to see if she would be interested in doing it, and she indicated she uh, would be. I have since um, received information that uh, another lady would like to be the citizen appointee, so uh, I, one would be Leslie Dewar, who served before, and the other is Rhonda Lee Jett. And so um, I guess we should just vote on them. I don't know. I'm not going to just appoint one. But what do y'all think? What are your wishes? Do you want to vote on it? We can vote, but I think we could probably just reach consensus. I don't think we yeah. need the formality right. of a vote. So yeah. what do you think? Speak up, please. I think if you've already reached out to Mrs. Dewar, you should probably go yeah. with her. She said she would be happy Had to continue not, serving. Had you not, I would say, you know, open it up, but okay. you've already... Yeah, kind of it would be kind of awkward commitment. to call her back and say, right. no, we decided not. And so. I think, did Mrs. Bullock say she would sit on it? Uh, yeah, we have, we're going to get to that after okay. we do the citizen. So I'll, I'll, I'll you want to just let Ms. Dewar? Okay. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, that we had already but, talked but I appreciate the offer. Don't go far. Mm -hmm. One of these days we'll say, hey. Mm -hmm. I think okay. we could put her on the docket for next year. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say <laughs> that as well for next year. And okay, was... and then we need one board member, and I believe that last year it was, uh, it was Ms. Gilhausen mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Ms. Bullock was the alternate, and so we were kind of discussing maybe Ms. Bullock. I'll be happy to be the alternate. Okay, so <laughs> if it, is that, if you, is that her, so no. do I have agreement from the board that it'll be Ms. Bullock and Ms. Bola will be the alternate? We're trying to confuse you with all our B names. Yes. Yeah. It's working. B Bullock, <laughs> Bola, right. I, we need mm -hmm. some more Bs in yeah. here. <laughs> Busy Bs. Okay, Ms. Bush? We do need to vote on this, though. Mm -hmm. Do we need to vote on this? I think you okay. just appoint them. Okay. It sounds like an Well, it says a point. That's yeah. why I was wondering. Well, it says motion yeah. to appoint. I think we do. So maybe we should. Mr. Bickner, is this something we should be voting on? I generally say vote, but you can, if it's by consensus and everybody's agreed with it, I don't Everybody. think you need a vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. That works. Okay, so we have a consensus, right? Okay, Ms. Um, Bush, you have the names? Okay. Human Resources Special Action A. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. A second. Have a motion by Ms. Bola, second by Ms. Caracas. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. Next. I'll open a public hearing to approve modifications to the 2018-2019 student progression plan. Is there anyone here who would like to, ad to address this item? If not, I'll bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. Who seconded it? I did. All right. Motion by Ms. Caracas, second by Ms. Bullock. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. The next item is the, I'll open a public hearing uh, and vote to improve as advertised the adoption of astronomy, forensic, marine, and physical science materials. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. Was that Ms. Bola? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have a motion by Ms. Caracas, second by Ms. Bola. Any discussion? All those in favor <laughs> indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. Next is the public hearing to approve the 2019-2020 Student Handbook and Student Code of Conduct. I'll open the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone here to address this item? 
not, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval for discussion. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. I have a second. A motion by Ms. Gilhausen, a second by Ms. Bola. Now for discussion, Ms. Gilhausen. I just had one area of concern, and it was um, in regard to the random search part of our student handbook. And the questions I had are, um, first of all, who will decide that we're having a random search? Second of all, who will perform the random search? And thirdly, um, I've had a couple of parents concerned about daughters and having a male search their daughter. So I just wanted for points of clarity to speak okay. to that. Let me ask Mr. McCauley to respond okay. to that. Oh, you want to respond? Yeah, respond you, to or go ahead, yeah, Mr. Through, Davis. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Through the chair. Well, first and foremost, um, uh, we are we have every legal right to conduct searches. Sure. And um, I, I think for us, we have to be proactive in our efforts. Um, we usually will conduct searches if we have uh, any tips, or if we are informed, or if we have any suspicion. That allows us to go in in order to, uh, to pr conduct the search in order to better uh, understand the situation to protect our children. And I think we have to do that, especially in this days and uh, this day and age in this era that we that our students live in, which is much different than the one that we have. As it relates to who will determine it, the administration will determine that, and uh, it would the not school, be school-based administration. School-based administration okay. will determine that. Uh, it'll be in collaboration with um, uh, you know whether it's students or who are see something, say something, or teachers. We will get more of the information that we have, and we feel that there's definitely a need, then we will go in and we'll do it in a uh, graceful and delicate manner. Uh, we will make certain that we have uh, the, the appropriate staff. If uh, males will, make, will, will go in, male um, teachers or I mean, educators, administrators will go in and search males, and then we will make certain that we have uh, female staffs that will take care of uh, females as well. As you know, I have two, two daughters, that one that just graduated, one attends this uh, school district, and we will make sure that they are treated with grace and respect as always in this leadership. So um, we will do that. There will always be, we will not ask uh, if we think that there's something related after our search that uh, law enforcement needs to be involved. They will be involved at that secondary. after that stage secondary from our preliminary work internally within our school district. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it, we have to be proactive in our measures. And, um, you know, uh, the, and, and legally we have the right to do so, and, and we will continue to, to conduct these searches as needed and as informed within our school district. Professor, anything? Uh, to the chair and to uh, Ms. Gilhausen, uh, we, we don't take the decision lightly, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not as if they are done constantly, but I appreciate your, your, your question and concern, and to the superintendent's point, when it's needed, um, it'll be done with consultation of, of people like John Ward and myself uh, before anything is done. And typically, random searches really don't involve the individual as much as they do book bags or lockers or spaces that students could store things. So, See, now that's that, the to me, that's a little bit different. If a random search versus a search for cause, and it sounds like what what you just spoke to her that basically our our process is that we search for cause. If there's a reason. But is that not the case? Uh, through, through the chair, we, we will search. If, if there's a situation that, that comes up to us and there's a need to search, we will conduct the search. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we have to conduct the search. And like the professor said, and regardless of what it would be, maybe it's a, a, it's a locker, maybe it's a book bag, maybe it's an individual. We'll ask them to, to independently uh, what's in their pockets, whether it's in their socks, whatever it may be. We will conduct that search as, as needed if uh, there's some type of, um, you know, uh, if there's some type of information that we get that we believe that we have to conduct it. Okay, yep. that answers my question, yep. thank you. And, and just a, just a, as a former principal, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I conducted many of those yeah. uh, myself, and um, on nine times out of 10, the information we had received was correct, and we found something that was yeah. uh, that we needed to address, thank okay. you. Okay, Anything? any other discussion? Okay, all of us in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. Next, uh, D6, public hearing to approve new school board policies, Police Department dash section nine, general orders 9.01 through 9.16. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address this item? Not, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Have Second. a motion. Sorry. Second by Ms. Bola. Okay. Have a motion by Ms. Gilhausen, a second by Ms. Bola. Uh, any further discussion? 
All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. School board attorney remarks. No. no. School board member remarks. I think I started with Ms. Gilhausen last time. I'll start with Ms. Bolo this time. Ah, thanks. Uh, first of all, shout out to Caleb Dressel. He is Isn't making Clay County proud. Wow. Yeah. Go. And numerous other Clay High graduates <laughs> that were in the paper and mm -hmm. doing wonderful things. Amazing. Um, a thank you to Ms. Corsi. I know that she is somewhat officially retired now from being an assistant principal and just wanted to say thank you for all of your hard work and all that you've done for our community. You will be missed, but we'll see you, I'm sure. Um, the only other thing, aside from, wow, teachers come back on Tuesday. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time. It's the beginning of the school year again. It seems like just a week ago, we were saying thank you for the wonderful job that everyone did last year. Um, but the year is starting off, I think, really well. And we'll continue to to progress very well this year. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up, Ms. Studdard, I read in the newspaper that the University of Wisconsin is going to be playing Alabama. I saw that. You know, so I will start wearing my Badger gear and bringing you all into the, you know, the Wisconsin. I will and, call it out of order. Yeah, hey, you betcha. <laughs> Other than that, I hope I everybody that. enjoys their last day off tomorrow. <laughs> um, it's going to be a busy week next week, and I know everyone's preparing, and I've already seen many teachers in their classrooms getting ready. So good luck to everyone. <laughs> be safe and enjoy. Okay, Ms. Uh... Bullock. Bullock. Bola Bullock, yeah. I don't know who you're, which way you're headed. Um, well, um, I got I was, it. Uh, lucky to serve on the Community Partnership School at Keystone Heights High School, and we had a great meeting this past week. Uh, Mr. McCauley was there, and uh, uh, Tina Baker is doing a great job at Keystone, and I'm very proud of her. Um, I, I had to I ask uh, Chief Wagner to meet me with a resident this past week, and I appreciate him doing that. And while I was there outside of Keystone Heights Elementary School at the parking lot, the custodian started waving to me that was doing the grounds. Uh, he came over, got off his mower, unlocked the door, threw his arms around me, and said, I thank you so much for that additional custodian. So thank you, board, for approving that additional custodian. And I'm passing this hug to everybody for that. And um, I would just have one question about this coin we got. Um, Chief Wagner, if I get a speeding ticket, can will it help me in any way? No way, I see. Oh, I've got a speed in a school zone. No, that's school not zone. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's very nice of you. Ms. Caracas. Well, um, what, a, what a night this was. This swearing in ceremony just touched my heart. And I got chills during this. And um, I wish they were still here because I actually put a little sentence or two together to the men and women that answered the call when we started this police force. I just wanted to say thank you to them for stepping up when we really needed them. They stepped up to protect our children and to serve on the Clay County School District's police force. And I know of Chief, Chief Wagner many years now, and I have the utmost faith and respect for you. I know that you're up for the challenge, and I know that we're in good hands, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all these men and women that stepped up for us. I really appreciate it. That's it. Ms. Gilhausen. Um, so over the last week, I've had several phone calls and emails um, asking me specifically about our children in Clay County schools in danger. And unfortunately, our meeting was adjourned before that question was answered. So um, I'm not trying to rehash a sore subject at all, but I believe that that question deserves an answer. And, um, you know, we've got school starting on the 13th, less than two weeks away. I, I want parents to know that our kids are coming to a safe environment. Would you like to address that? Through the chair, um, I, I was out of town. I guess you're talking about a meeting that took place. I'm, I'm not certain that. Uh, it was our, 
was the, we had three meetings that day. I think okay. It was during the budget hearing, I believe. Yeah, so at the end of the day, I can tell you, as superintendent of schools, we are ready and prepared. We will have a, you know, for the first time ever, you will have resource officers at every one of our schools in Clay County, which is a significant celebration. And uh, we will have guardians as well. So uh, parents, if you're watching, please rest assured that we have personnel ready to serve and protect every single day. And we look forward to a great launch on August 13th when our children come back. Teachers come back next week. We're ready to go for you. You get a chance to meet the individuals who will wear the blue every single day, the men and the women that will wear the blue every single day, and they'll be there to help you in any way, shape, or form to protect and serve and, and for our children and our adults. So we're ready to go, and uh, we're excited about the opportunity. So no danger, no emergency. Um, the other thing that, you know, tonight was very moving to watch these um, men and women who dare to don a uniform that a lot of times attracts danger to them and uh, the risk that they put themselves in in that position. And it's an honorable service to our community, to our children, to our teachers and staff. And I want to say thank you to them. Um, but one thing that's concerning to me is that I'm of the understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we are not placing resource officers at our charter schools. Is that correct? Through the chair, uh, you know, we have staff that's communicating continuously with charter schools. The charter schools, it's, uh, they get a prorated uh, portion of money through the outline by the state, and we have asked them what their wishes are at each of their schools, and um, I believe that uh, one's going to continue the Guardian program at, uh, you know, St. John's Classical. They will continue the movement with the Guardian, and uh, the other charter school that we currently have will continue their current route, which they are outsourcing the work with retired, uh, I mean, well, off-duty officers who will continue to protect and serve. So we're in constant communication because we want to make certain that we serve every one of our schools, and uh, this is the election to these two um, uh, these two agencies and I say agency schools have identified that they will continue the work. May I say something? And let's remember when we approved this police force, we approved it for public schools, for Clay County schools. We didn't approve it for any charter schools. Charter schools are Clay County public schools. They're not one of our charter one of our schools. They're charter schools. We don't run them, we don't govern them, we have no authority over them. That's not so true. We did okay. not approve it. Okay, we're not going to ladies, please conduct yourself professionally. We, we are. We are professional, okay. we're having a discussion, and we okay. did not approve that. So if that's something you would yeah. want, that's you'd correct. need to put it on the agenda for the board to vote for. Well, so, I'm just asking for what it, what is the board's yeah. opinion on that? Yeah, sorry, so through the chair, I mean, I don't mean to stop and disrupt you. Through the chair, if this board directs me, I was going to say that it directs me to uh, to take a different stance, then we will go back to their governing boards. Their governing boards will decide how they do that. We cannot force them to take, uh, you know, certain, we can't force them to take guardians. We can't force them to hire outside agencies. We can't, <coughs> you know, force them to take on resource officers through our umbrella. It's up to their board. So if this board decides that they will fund it differently, then just give me direction and we will continue our collaboration to make sure that every child in this county is, uh, is, is protected. I think the way we're handling it with them getting their portion of the funds is how it should be handled. But they're not receiving a portion of the safety funds that we raise through the millage. They're not. So they don't have the funding that we have. They're getting it from the safe school money. Which is that's what they're supposed to receive, not the millage fraction. money. It's not enough to pay a salary for a resource officer. That's, well. that's their, to talk to their board of directors. That's their situation. So because of money, we're not going to protect the children and the faculty of the charter school because some board members believe that they don't belong to the public school district? Is that what I'm understanding? I don't believe that the charter school is one of our schools that we're responsible for. Yes, that is what I'm saying. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I don't want to interrupt you if you're not done. It's still your comments. I think that answers my question, unless the other board members have something they'd like to say if they feel differently. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter where a public child, public school child goes to school, they're all our response. Their safety is our responsibility. And I, I don't understand how you can value a dollar more than a child's life or a, a teacher's life. That, that, I, those I schools are full of children and teachers. Take it up with their governing body. That's what I think you should do. Um, but I did have a question that she just brought to my mind. Um, we did receive a letter from Commissioner Diane Hutchins advising us that they had let go of their principal or that their principal resigned, that there was a accusations of grade changings, and I'd like to know an update on the status of the investigation as well as have they filled that principal position at this point. So through the chair, I have not had knowledge that they have filled this position as of yet. 
Um, I asked staff a couple of days ago if they feel a position because we want to make sure we have constant communication. I know we've been working with their assistant principal. As relates to the investigation, our job was to, to extend this to, uh, the, to the charter school so they can do their own internal investigation since they don't work for, for us through brick and mortar and under our governance. But we did, as professionally expected, move this information through HR, send this to the uh, professional standards, so professional standards has that as well. But since then, uh, I believe the individual has uh, resigned. Uh, but I don't know the uh, any updates that they have they have come through whether or not they're involved in that uh, investigation at this time. And you'll let us know when you find out. Yes, ma'am. Through the chair, right, I will get we'll, with our division. Ms. Kerkis, I'm sure you could contact their governing board and get that information. I would rather go through our superintendent than do that. But thank you for the mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. I would also like to just make one comment yeah. about uh, Ms. Gilhouse and with the emergency situation. Uh, even though our schools are ready to be open, <coughs> there are emergency situations that do exist, and we have to work around them. And I will tell you for a fact, at Keystone Heights High School, they have a sewer issue mm -hmm. going on right now, which Dr. Kemp has not been unable to find a contractor to go and take care of that issue. So that's an emergency. I can trust you. When my septic tank goes out, it's an emergency. Okay. Any more comments? No, that's okay. it. Thank you. Okay, I, then my turn. I am so excited. This has been like Christmas. Officer Miles Romano, Lieutenant Miles, Lieutenant Romano, Chief Wagner. And tonight I said officers, not deputies. See, I'm learning. Okay. The presentation tonight was over the top. And, you know, the, I was sitting there listening to their background of when they were being pinned. Do you have any idea how much total numbers, how much experience, all of the um, total together? Have you added it up? I was, I was just absolutely amazed at the years of experience that they were bringing, and uh, they seemed excited, and they were happy and upbeat, and it, they're looking forward to getting to work, and it, it was just thrilling, and I know we're all excited about it. And to, oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Well, my hat's <laughs> off to you, and no. Uh, we, we wish you all well. We're behind you 100%. Okay. Um, well, the teachers are getting ready to come back, and then the 13th, I believe, is the first day for the students, and here we go again. Let's hope the air conditioners keep working um, and that we don't have hot kids like we were hot earlier tonight. Uh, it was hot in this audience tonight, but we had a lot of people in here. It's starting to cool off now that it's almost time to adjourn the meeting. But uh, I want to wish you all uh, good luck this school year. I am thrilled that we are settled with SESPA. Um, hope we can finish it out before long. Um, so I hope everyone has a good evening, and uh, we have a great start to school, and have a happy night. Good the meeting's adjourned.